Hi y'all, welcome back. Today I'm just going to do a little garden tour. Right here we have black sesame seeds and there's a tiny little sprout coming up. And then that's that whole row or almost. And then here we have black chia. And those are those little sprouts. bachelor button back there and we have some forage and then some red leaf amaranth I'm not sure it's really bright out here I'm not sure if you can see that little sprouts so the calendula and I don't see anything for the California poppy. There's nothing up. I've not grown it before, so I'm not sure how it'll do. Then orange calendula. Back there, some more calendula. And then some, let me get closer. Some amaranth. Love lies bleeding tiny little sprouts some Mexican marigold mint and then just open your little sprouts for the seeds the fig trees last year <clears throat> and earlier in the season they had green up top but now there's green at the bottom and nothing at the tops so I'm not really sure I'm gonna have to look into that because I don't know why those died back I mean it, it did get cold but I don't know if that growth is supposed to be there or not if you know let me know in the comments same thing with this one it's got growth down there but then all the growth that was on the top is gone all right moving to another bed and that right there it's i put some seeds down a couple days ago it's been raining so we'll see if those sprout but here is a green tomatillo it's really bright guys so i apologize if i'm not like in focus i'm trying but i don't know and so it's got little flowers on it that's kind of cool and then here is a purple tomatillo and it has little flowers on it. it has several little flowers on it so that's pretty cool our last frost date was april the second and i think that weekend i went ahead and put things out here and when we get to the tomato bed, I will show you where I got a lot of this going on where it just got too cold and it, the leaves just died back. But, so I have those two tomatillos. have some marshmallow coming in there. I've got basils here. So that's spicy globe basil. Then I just have spicy basil and we've got some sweet basil some more marshmallow and that right there is a mushroom coming up a whole bunch of mushrooms more marshmallow I planted a whole bunch of marshmallows on here Back there, that chamomile. That chamomile was struggling. But it's, I guess, holding up. And you see all the mushrooms back there. I'm moving along. I'm trying collards. I'm not sure if it's going to be too hot. I'm not sure how they're going to do. But I planted them anyway. Why not? 
some cilantro, red Malabar spinach, some other spinach, more calendula. And when you see, you see I have different things. So like I have those poles there. I have these cages here. That is because of the birds and the squirrels and just trying to keep the critters, discourage them from being here. These are the rutabagas. So this whole bed is rutabagas. And then the parsnips. The parsnips are not doing much of anything. And so I went ahead and started a kale. I'm not sure how it'll do. It's puny looking. I don't know what that is. It was labeled. Do you see that? It's gone. All the rain is just gone. So I have no idea. Hmm. I'm going to wait a little while longer and see if any of this parsnips because I don't think it's been quite three weeks yet but I would think I would have seen some sprouts so if nothing comes up then I'll probably just plant something else here because there's nothing see all the little flowers on that tomato and that's a surprise tomato because just like that one because I didn't label them. That's another tomato. This is a long slim cayenne. But if you look at it, it's droopy. It may be because of the water. It's been so wet. I don't know. Ground cherry tomatoes. Look at that. Oh, look at that one. Nice. I've not grown ground cherries before. Just a whole bunch of mushrooms. But look at all of these. <laughs> More mushroom. So here's cayenne purple, pepper. More ground cherry. So I pulled some of those mushrooms up. This beef steak. And it looks like it's doing really good. There's no flowers on it. But it looks like it's doing good. Eggplant. Another cayenne long. That one's looking much better. This is eggplant and it is looking horrible. The growth coming in looks good, but these top leaves are looking horrible. So I may come out here and pinch those off. Lacento dino kale. I don't know how it's going to do because it's pretty hot. More tomato. And this is what, if we're not at the tomato bed, but see that? A lot of the leaves are like that, and I think it's just because I probably should have waited a little bit longer. This is another eggplant. I'm going to go ahead and just... Ow! Ooh, that has pokies on it. I don't know if I can get that in the video, but... Ouch! I will come back out with some gloves and pruning shears to go ahead and get that. And then we'll go ahead and go to another bed. We'll go inside. Right, so I've shown you these. All right, so this is the entry to the garden. And there to the right, it's all those radishes that y'all planted with me. And that was, those are 
the wasabi, the daikon, and watermelon. So those take longer. So those maybe have another 30, 45 days to go or something like that. With some, on this end, we did rutabagas and parsnips. And the parsnips on this end, they, they did sprout, some of them. So those other ones may come up. And I showed you in that other bed, they may come up soon. I don't know. Anyway, so that's to the right at the entryway. And then if we come over here to the left, we have the other bed. And right there is a cucumber. So this is the bed to the left of the entryway. And you can see how those leaves are. The rest of it's looking okay though. And tiny little bloom coming up. And this is what I'm telling you about the, the leaves. And yeah, so it happens. That's a uh, black cherry, indefinite. Those are some jade striped beans. Those are cucumbers. Swiss chard. And then if we move that way, we have that beans and beans. So back there, we have Swiss chard. Then we have beans, we have some nasturtiums, this is another blueberry tomato, so this one has a little bit of damage, and it also has a tiny little bloom, and then we have more beans, some collards, cucumbers, and if we go up to the side, those are the peas, several different varieties of peas. And then if we come this way, this was the radish bed, one of the radish beds. And I've pulled some and planted some basils, so basil, basil, little basils. There's still radishes, you can see. Probably not the good a good day to be out here videoing because I cannot even see what's on the screen but I did want to show you so anyway so this is this bed and so it's radishes that will have to get harvested soon right there I have cucumbers and then I have also sowed some pole beans along that end as well. So that's more cucumber. That's cucumber. And then on that end we have more cucumbers. These are different varieties of cucumbers. But I wanted to show you some of these radishes. They look pretty good. So here's that one. So we moved to the other side. More tomatoes. So 
more damage on the leaves. You can see the damage right there. It's on a lot of the tomatoes. So all that right there are tomatoes. This is the bachelor button that came back from last year. Very pretty. Some more borage. Pepper. That is a chocolate pepper. This is shishito pepper. And I mean, look. What a flowers. It's first time growing shishito. Seems to be doing good. Those are more bush beans. And then we have jalapeno flowering. And then let me get up and move over here are dragon tongue beans. Jade. Jade. But look, look at these leaves. So that's what happens when you get excited and it's the last frost date, but then it gets really cold. Tomatoes and peppers really don't enjoy the cold. So this is what I have, but I am going to prune a lot of these off. I was waiting for it to get warm and it is pretty warm out. And I don't think we're expecting any more cold nights. I'll have to look, but I was waiting so I can go ahead and prune all these off. But you see that? So all, all those, I'm not sure if you can see that. Yeah. And so even though these have the leaves like that, that look pretty bad, they still have the blooms on them. And so that's exciting. So that's it for this bed. Look oh, that beautiful blue. I just love it. And I love that it just came back on its own. These right here were an experiment to try to overwinter them. I think they're dead, but... I don't, need, I don't have anything that needs to go in those bags right now, so I'm going to go ahead and just leave them and see if they do anything. Give them another week or so. Same with this one. So I've just experimented. They lived in the shed for the winter. This right here, I am going to... This is an ant pile, a big one, because we have big problem with ants, but you can see it. It goes right down the cement, right out there. So I am gonna make something that should help with that. And I'll bring you along and we'll see how well it works. Bring you along to this bed. Here's the fennel, which needs practically no care. This fennel was planted two or three years ago, I think it was. Whenever we started the garden out here, this is one of the first things that went in. And look at it, and it smells so good. And then that one went in, I think, the year after. And so there's just greens in this bed. And they've had a slow start. And I think it's because of how cold it got.